So I get asked a lot um, about pre-workout and how to kind of plan that out and what you should be thinking about pre-workout and just some considerations. I just want to go through kind of my kind of top six sort of considerations you should be looking at. So when you're looking at pre-workout, most people take pre-workouts, you know, to kind of give them that little buzz, that big kick of energy. And most people, if they're training, like, you know, especially at the end of the day, they're like, oh, I need to get, you know, just done eight, eight nine hours of work and they need a, a bit of energy and they're going to go to the gym and they smash in a pre-workout. So the kind of first consideration you should be looking at when you're, you're thinking about pre-workouts is whether you're going to be training in the morning or going to be training in the afternoon, evening. If you're training in the morning um, and you know you want to kind of fit it into your normal circadian rhythm cycle, um, you know when we're in the mornings we release an adrenaline, and when we get into the afternoon and evening, we release some more testosterone and growth hormone. And we're not we're trying to the body's generally kind of cooling down and easing off as the day goes by. So if we're training in the morning and we're, the adrenaline's being released anyway, then you know a little bit of caffeine. Um, and a, you know, a sti stimulants in a way could be a quite a good option to, to use in the morning. Um, whereas using caffeine in the evening, if you're training like say six o'clock in the evening, is not great because caffeine takes a good sort of 12 hours to get out of your system. Whereas if you're training in the morning, first in the morning, a bit, bit of caffeine like through a coffee, uh, coffee with a bit of coconut oil could be a great strategy to use pre workout. And I always find coffee is, is just a great, is you know, better than all these supplements like. Uh, no explodes and super pumps and stuff like that. You know, coffee with a bit of coconut oil and a bit of cacao uh, powder in there is a really, really good way to kind of get you buzzing in the morning. So the second consideration is then when you're looking at kind of your body fat levels. So a lot of people with pre-workout will take in a high amount of carbohydrates because they feel like they need this energy, quick energy release. Now, the higher your body fat is generally, um, the worst insulin sensitivity is so that you actually can't utilize the carbohydrates as well and actually will be just stored as fat and actually can make you feel a bit sluggish. Um, so generally when you're, if you're a little bit higher body fat levels, I'd just try and save your carbohydrates until like maybe after training or midway through your training depending on the time of session. Now if you're training in the evening um, and you don't want to be having caffeine, you know, nice, I mean, another maybe uh, supplement is your Hibbine HCL. Now that again is a big stimulant and uh, burns fat very rapidly, especially around your sort of around your legs and thighs and stuff like that. But it's very strong, so you need very small dosages. And if you want to look at dosages, go onto examine.com and type in your himbine, um, and they will give you really good dosing advice on that. Um, but as well as that, it clears up your system a lot, lot faster. So if you're training at five o'clock and you're taking it at four o'clock you'll be out of your system within sort of five hours. If you don't want that stimulation, stimulated effect, I would just, just take amino acids, so a little bit of tyrosine, um, because again, that's a, that converts into epidri um, not epidrine, <laughs> epinephrine or nor norepinephrine, so that is a, so a little bit of tyrosine is a nice little way to kind of get that little buzz, or carnitine, acetylocarnitine is a great one as well, because that goes straight to your brain. I even find just cacao sometimes on its own, or maca roots is a nice one. You have a little bit of tea in that, and then that really kind of gets you buzzing as well. Third consideration is also looking at the type of session that you're doing. So you know, whether you're doing a high intensity session in terms of, you know, I'm not talking about like doing hit classes, but in terms of like your percentages. So if you're doing like heavy compounds, like weightlifting, powerlifting, squats, deadlifts, cleans, then you know, you've got to be looking at, do I need carbohydrates for or not? Or if you especially you're a little bit sensitive to carbs and high body fat, then I wouldn't be touching carbohydrates before workout. Um, and instead, you know, taking your amino acids in before and you know, taking your BCAs or essential amino acids during your session just to keep you going. If you're looking for more muscle growth and hypertrophy and, and you're a bit leaner, you can tolerate carbohydrates and you're not... Um, and you're not looking to lose fat, you're just looking pure muscle growth, then you know, I would take some carbohydrates in pre-workout. And a great sort of mixture would be uh, highly branched cyclic dextrins. You can get through bulk fibers and stuff like that. Or if you like more natural um, natural sources of carbohydrates, then like an hour you know, with your meal before, have some you know, sweet potatoes, stuff like that. And then during your training, my favorite thing is having dates. Having a bit of dates during your session, especially if you're doing like pump work or you're doing hypertrophy work, it's, you get because of the very rich potassium, so you get ridiculous pumps, that muscle cramping type feeling. And a fourth thing you should be looking, considering is also your neurotype. 
So this Christian Thibodeau has been talking about this a lot recently, but Poloquin's been talking about it for the last 10 years and off and on. And we use it with our athletes uh, as well. But it's looking at how sensitive are you are to carbohydrates. So like if I take you know, a load of carbohydrates even before, uh, before, even during my session, I totally lose my motivation to train. I just totally just... Um, where some people have carbohydrates before training, they feel great. You know, they have tons of energy and really, really good. Um, so you just got to look at, you know, have a look at Christian Tibbet. I'll put a link below to his um, to his website and his articles and videos on it, and you can find out what sort of thing that you should be doing as well. Because all it look, looks at is between your your dopamine and serotonin ratios. And so if you're having a low level of dopamine already, and then you're smashing carbs in, which you know makes that ratio even bigger between serotonin and dopamine, you, know, you just can't be bothered to train. So that's not what you want. I also got to look at is like frequency of training as well. So like if you're training like twice a day, like some like weightlifters or people will train twice in one day, or even for like bodybuilders, um, then again you've got to be looking at what your kind of carbs and whether you're having them because especially for like the second session of the day, generally, kind of how people work it will be like lighter in the morning or heavy and heavy in the afternoon if you're doing more like weightlifting neurological work, or if you're doing more like bodybuilding sort of work and body composition, people will generally do like compounds in the morning and then pump sort of work in the afternoon so generally if I was doing it that way around um, if I was doing like compounds and then uh, isolation work in the afternoon I would try and s push my carbs around the isolation work because you don't need that neural drive as much you're just looking for a good pump and just trying to maximize the amount of glycogen in the muscles for the weightlifting for both sessions I wouldn't bother for myself but that may change for you depending on uh, how you are and your neurotype but again, I you know if you're if you're okay with carbohydrates, uh, again I'll put them in the afternoon. You just feel better for that heavier session. You can utilize them better for light sessions in the morning. If you're doing just power work or just weaknesses, then I wouldn't bother in the morning. Um, and then again, if you're looking at circadian rhythm, you know you generally carbohydrates suppress cortisol. So in the mornings you want to have a bit of cortisol. So the kind of sixth consideration would be. You know, do you actually need a pre-workout? Can't you just, just go in and just lift anyway? Do I need to have the best session ever today? Or you know, am I saving it for you know once a week am I gonna go and hit heavy and save my pre-workout for that day or my competition? Because often when you have pre like pre-workout stuff that really stimulates your adrenal glands and kind of milks out all your adrenaline, you know, it's taxing on the body. And it's like, do I need that every single day? And training only on the, on the edge and being nervous and kind of really getting you know up for your sessions can actually kind of have kind of negative side effects if you if you're training in the army and you're in iraq or whatever and you're smashing out sessions and then um you take a pre-workout you hit pb and whatever but then that in like an hour later you've got to go out you're called out and you've got to go and you're going to be totally smashed and so there's a big argument between you know, pre-workouts and actually do you need them and should you use them? And you've got to think about your whole situation, how often you're training, and um, you know, do you need to smash yourself every single day, or do you need to keep reserve and save it for a big situation? So I hope that's helped and given you a little bit of an insight into kind of pre-workouts and make you think a little bit more about when and how you use them and what you're using, and not just smashing, you know, pump and you know, caffeine stuff every single session, all day, every day. Uh, but actually thinking like right, when should I use it as well so like I forgot to say like Matt Lovell has a great product called Focus Formula which is you know includes a lot of the carnitines and tyrosine but also the herbs like Bacopa, Hupazine A um, which could be good and in the mornings you could be using things like Alpha GPC and you don't want to take that past one o'clock because you won't be able to sleep okay so you know, caffeine, Alpha GPC, these really strong substances that take a lot of time to get out of your system you want to save for the mornings. I'll put a few links below uh, in the notes and you can see have a look at the different products that I've used in the past for mornings and evenings um, and uh, also some strategies like that. Okay if you like it you know like the video and maybe we'll do one on during workouts and also post-workout nutritionists um, and give you guys an idea on how to kind of structure those out because again that will differ a lot.